questioning Cassidy Sutton and cross questioning Harper Carpus. I'm also going to be delivering our team's closing argument. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Samantha Harkey. I will be delivering our team's opening statement, as well as direct questioning Charlie Floyd and cross questioning Patty Dillinger. I also use she, her pronouns. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Dane Lester. I use he, him pronouns. Today, I'll be delivering the direct questioning of Agent Kelly James, as well as the cross questioning of Jesse Hurst. Good afternoon. My name is Alexandra Guerra. I use she, her pronouns, and I'll be portraying um, Charlie Floyd. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Avlene LaRoque. I use they, them pronouns, and today I'll be playing Agent Kelly James and also serve you as a timekeeper for my team. Good afternoon. My name is Aureli Olivares, and I will be playing Cassidy Sutton. I use she, her pronouns. Your Honor, with that, the prosecution is ready to proceed. All right, the defense team, starting with the lead counsel, please introduce yourself for the record. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Jocelyn Lopez. I will be conducting the opening statement and I will be directing Harper Carpus and crossing Kelly James. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name, members of the jury and opposing counsel, my name is Elia and today I will be directing Jesse Hurst and crossing Kathy Sutton. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Members of the jury, opposing counsel, my name is Elisa Ardez, and today I will be directing Pat Dillinger and crossing Charlie Floyd. And these are our witnesses. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Members of the jury, my name is Jane Lujan, and I will be portraying the role of Jesse Hurst. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Mateo Valencia, and I will portray the character of Harper Carpus. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I, today I will be portraying, my, my name is Maria Vasquez, and today I'll be portraying the role of Patty Dillinger. And that is our whole defense team, and we are ready. Are there any pretrial matters to cover? Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution has a few pretrial matters it would like to attend to before delivering its opening statement. Please proceed. Your Honor, may we assume that all of the exhibits in this case have been shared with Your Honor opposing counsel and members of the jury? Um, they will be shown to the members of the jury once they are entered into evidence. Um, but after that point, yes, you can consider them constructively shared. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. May we also assume that all witnesses on the prosecution have been constructively sworn in prior to trial? Both sides are constructively sworn in. Your Honor, according to Rule 2.8 of competition for mock trial, may we step in in person in case of an emergency scenario for taking the place of a witness? Yes. And may we also reserve the right to turn off our cameras in case our bandwidth runs low for internet? Yes. Your Honor, with that, the prosecution is ready to proceed when necessary. Are there any pretrial matters from the defense? Uh, yes, Your Honor, as well with the internet issues if we could turn off our cameras. Yes, if that does become an issue, I will let you know and um, we, will, we will take that measure. Thank you. That's all your right. Is the government ready with its opening statement? Yes, Your Honor. Please proceed. This is a case about silent theft. Not every bank robber waves a gun demanding money. Some robbers stand behind the teller desk ready to hand cash to their co-conspirators. We will show that this is what Parker Barrow did. On October 31st of 2019, 
Parker Barrow, a teller, was the lone employee at Third National Bank. A bank customer, Mr. Foley, entered to make his regular Tuesday cash deposit. Two masked women, Laura Bousmeau and Charlie Floyd, followed. Miss Floyd held a gun. Upon request, Parker Barrow calmly handed Miss Bousmeau a bag of cash and the police arrived. We will show that Parker Barrow was a conspirator to this bank robbery. We will call three witnesses today. They will show that Parker Bear committed conspiracy to commit bank robbery, bank robbery, and armed robbery. First, we will call Kelly James. An FBI agent who investigated the conspiracy and robbery will tell you how they concluded that Parker Barrow conspired to rob the Third National Bank with Charlie Floyd, Lloyd Bousmail, and a fourth individual named Jane Doe. Agent James will explain that they entered the Third National Bank after the robbery, saw Parker Barrow looking nervous, and saw the sole security camera facing the bank ceiling. Agent James collected fingerprints off the camera, and the print matched those of Mrs. Barrow's left index finger. Agent James identified the ladder likely used to adjust the camera and found Miss Barrow's right thumbprint. Charlie Floyd made the mistake of participating in the bank robbery. She will tell you about how the conspiracy unfolded and what happened on the day in question. The conspiracy began when Jane Doe recruited three co-conspirators. Miss Doe bought four disposable flip phones and handed one to each of the co-conspirators. Miss Floyd went to the bank a week before the robbery and she saw Parker Barrow with her flip phone. Miss Floyd will testify that Jane Doe said Parker Barrow was the inside woman. On October 31st, Miss Floyd brought a gun to the bank. She threatened Mr. Foley while Parker Barrow calmly handed a bag of cash to Miss Boosmail. And finally, we will call Cassidy Sutton. Cassidy Sutton is the bank manager at Third National Bank. She will tell you about how Miss Barrow's parents had expensive medical issues, so she needed money. Miss Sutton saw Parker Barrow eating lunch with Jane Doe. Miss Barrow was the last to leave the night, the the night before the bank was robbed. Miss Sutton will explain that after she left, the bank security camera was moved and Parker Barrow was the only person who could have been in that bank. Miss Barrow suggested that our client take October 31st off. Then, on October 31st, the silent alarm located at her feet was never triggered. We will show that Parker Barrow is guilty of conspiracy to commit bank robbery, bank robbery, and armed bank robbery. Conspiracy, as explained in a case called U.S. v. Bauman, requires that only a person agrees to commit a crime. We will prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Parker Barrow agreed to participate in the robbery on October 31st. A person has committed bank robbery as explained in a case called U.S. v. Shaw when she conspires to commit bank robbery and the robbery is reasonably foreseeable from the conspiracy. We will again prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Parker Barrow could reasonably expect the bank robbery to happen. If one co-conspirator possesses a gun, all of the co-conspirators are guilty of armed bank robbery, as explained in U.S. case called U.S. v. Stromiello. We will prove yet again, beyond a reasonable doubt, that Charlie Floyd possessed a gun during the robbery on October 31st. This is a case about silent theft. At the end of this trial, we will ask you to find Parker Barrow guilty of conspiracy to commit bank robbery, bank robbery, and armed robbery. Thank you. Thank you. Counsel for the defense, do you have an opening statement? Yes, Your Honor. Would you like to give that opening statement now or at the beginning of your case in chief? Uh, right now, it's good. Proceed. May it please the court? Yes. Simply not involved. Your Honor, members of the jury, my name is Jocelyn Lopez, and today, along with my colleagues, Yarisa Valdez and Eddie Artelejo, we will proudly be representing the defendant, Parker Barrow. Parker Barrow is many things, a responsible, young, and professional bank employee with a budding career, a talented artist, sculptor, and photographer, an honest, helpful, and adoring child of a single parent suffering from stomach cancer. This type of child that would give up their scholarship to study art at their dream school to help tend to the needs of their parent. The kind of child that would also give up their newly found independence and well-furnished apartment 
to move back home to care for their suffering and sick parent, Jesse Hurst. But the most important thing you will learn today is what Parker Barrel isn't. And that is responsible for any criminal activity that took place at the robbery of the Third National Bank of Midlands. This is what we know to be true. On October 31st, 2019, at around 11 a.m., two armed and masked individuals entered the Third National Bank with the intention to rob it. Those individuals were Charlie Floyd and Lori Bausma. We now know that there was in fact a third assailant, the getaway driver and possible mastermind of the crime, Jane Doe. That's it. These three individuals are solely responsible for this armed bank robbery. Today, the facts, facts, evidence, and testimony will show that only three individuals planned and executed this crime. Parker Barrow was at the scene of the crime, but only because he was working like he normally does from Monday through Friday and sometimes on Saturdays. The investigators in this crime are drawing conclusions not based in fact. The evidence in this case is interpretable. The eyewitness accounts are weak and unreliable. In fact, there is no concrete evidence to show that Parker Barrow knows anyone personally who was involved in this robbery. That Parker Barrow had any motive to commit this crime or that even Parker Barrow had anything to do with the planning or the execution of this crime. What we do know is that Parker Barrow had no reason to risk their job, life, future, or even the well being of their parent to engage in this type of criminal activity. Parker Barrow asserts their innocence today. The defense will present to you three key witnesses to help illustrate the clear doubt in this case that will point to their innocence. First, FBI criminology consultant and university professor Harper Karpis will testify that there simply is not enough facts or evidence to support that there was a fourth accomplice or that even that person was Parker Barrow. Next, Jesse Hurst will testify to the character of Barrow and the impression of Barrow the day of the crime. Finally, Patty Dillinger will show that there simply are too many inconsistencies with the facts of this case. As opposed as supposed eyewitness Dillinger saw the crime from across the street through a closed door and could not see inside the bank. The only things the prosecution has for certain today are speculation, hearsay, and random evidence that do not get to the root of the issue being addressed today. The defense is confident that after hearing the facts and testimony presented to you today in this case, you will find the defendant not guilty on any charge. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Does the government have any witnesses to call? Yes, Your Honor. Prosecution calls Kelly James to the stand. And if I can just wait for the crossing attorney, that would be great. May I proceed? You may. Can you please introduce yourself for the court? My name is Kelly James and I'm a special agent with the FBI. And what are your qualifications for being a special agent? Well, I have investigated 12 bank robberies during my time with the FBI, eight as a lead investigator. Most of my cases focus on white collar and organized crime, and I regularly assist state officials with investigating federal crimes, namely bank robberies. And what is your educational background? I graduated from the University of Arizona with a bachelor's degree in economics, and then worked as an accountant for four years. And of course, I graduated from the FBI Academy in 2012. And what did you learn at the FBI Academy? The curriculum focused on comprehensive academic, physical, and operational training, and I received additional training in forensics, evidence preservation, and criminology. And how did you get involved in the case at Barr? Well, I was called in to work with my team on the robbery of the Third National Bank of Midlands. Thank you, Agent James. Now you mentioned being called in to work today. Can you describe this call? Of course. At 11.27 a.m. on October 31st, 
2019, the Midland City branch of the FBI received a phone call from the local police. They were calling to report an attempted armed robbery at the Third National Bank of Midlands. And what did you do after you received the call? Special Agent Maria Fonseca and I headed to the scene of the crime since the FBI has jurisdiction over attempted robberies at federal banks. Once we got there, we found that the local police had already cordoned off the perimeter of the scene. There's also a small group of civilians present, including one individual who kept shouting, this is my bank, I'm the manager. Great, and what did you do next? Special Agent Fonseca and I entered the bank. There, we found five people, three police officers and two civilians. And who were these civilians? We later identified these civilians as Parker Barrow, the sole teller on duty at the time of the crime, and Jackie Foley, a customer who witnessed the robbery. And what did you do after you entered the building? One of the police officers took Foley and Barrow to the police station. After they left, the two remaining officers notified me and Agent Fonseca that two of the suspects, Charlie Floyd and Laurie Boozmail, were already in custody, with a third suspect, the getaway driver, on the run. Now, the prosecution asks that for the convenience of the court, that this getaway driver be referred to as Jane Doe for the purposes of convenience. That is stipulated too, correct? Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Agent James, did you see anything unusual when you entered the bank? Yes, I did. The security camera in the lobby was pointed at the ceiling. Did you investigate the camera? Yes. My team and I discovered a four-foot-tall ladder in the bank's utility closet. We moved this to the location of the camera and determined that nobody had tampered with the camera other than changing its position. Mm -hmm. We also discovered that the ladder was needed to access the camera and lifted a fingerprint from the ladder and two fingerprints from the camera. We tested those fingerprints. And have you received the results for these fingerprint analyses yet? Yes. The fingerprint on the top rung of the ladder was an 18-point match to Parker Barrow's right thumb. The FBI considers it a match if 12 or more distinct points of comparison correspond. We could not identify one of the prints on the camera, but the other print on the right side of the camera was a 12-point match to Parker Barrow's left index finger. Great. And did you complete any follow-up investigation after your time at the bank? Yes, I did. I spoke to Jackie Foley over the phone, which yielded hardly any concerns. And I also spoke to Parker Barrow over the phone, which did raise my suspicions. And what suspicions did you have? Well, when I asked Parker Barrow about why the security camera in the lobby was pointed at the ceiling, they paused for a noticeable time before answering. They also gave me information about their efforts to stop the robbers and their involvement with the bank that deviated from my findings. Agent James, I understand that you have reviewed the security footage from the bank. Yes, I did as part of my investigation. Uh, Your Honor, permission to display Exhibit 1. Uh, permission granted. Co-counsel. Uh, Your Honor, it, it seems that the host disabled uh, participant screen sharing. Hmm. Maybe I can try. I'm another attorney. Maybe it might work for me. As I have invited the admin into the room to correct this. What can I do for you? Uh, it appears that we do not have the ability to screen share. Would you like me to pause the time, Your Honor? Yes, please. Both timekeepers, please pause the time while we fix this issue. Yes, Your Honor. Who's needing to screen share? I'm the screen sharing person, Your Honor. And I'm the screen sharing person while he's talking. It's Nathan Cho and Samantha Harkey. Nathan should have privileges to do so. Samantha, I'll need you to come out to the main session, then I can make you a co-host, then you can come back in. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Co-counsel, can you screen share now? Please, please keep the time paused. Let's not continue until. I still do not have ability. Okay.
Your Honor, may I leave to the main room to get screen sharing uh, permission from the admin? Yes, please do. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, while he's doing that, may I do the screen sharing? Uh, no, we will not continue until all team members from both sides have returned. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Have all team members returned and can everyone confirm they have screen sharing privileges who needs it? I have the ability, Your Honor. Samantha? Yes. Your Honor. Does everyone on the defense have screen sharing privileges as well? At the moment, we do not know if we do have screen sharing, Your Honor. Okay. Um, do you have all of your team members back? Let me double check real quick, Your Honor. Thank you. Apologies to everyone. Yes, Your Honor, we do have all of our team members. Timekeepers, please resume the time. And counsel for the prosecution, you may continue. Yes, as I was saying, co-counsel, thank you. Now, Agent James, are you familiar with this exhibit? Yes, this is a fair and accurate depiction of the floor plan of the Third National Bank of Midlands. Your Honor, permission to move Exhibit 1 into evidence. Any objection? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Lack of foundation, as I do not know what this piece of document will be used in this case for. Response? Your Honor, it is stipulated in this case that no objections may be made to Exhibit 1 and 2 as they are fair and accurate. Any other response? Um, no, Your Honor. All right. The objection is overruled and it is entered as Exhibit 1. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Agent James, as I was saying, can you describe the security footage you say that you saw referencing the locations on this map as necessary? Certainly. The bank's security camera footage shows the last customer on October 30th, 2019, leaving at 5.23 p.m. and Casty Sutton, the manager of the bank, leaving at 5.31 p.m., both via the main entrance, which is located at letter B on the map. Between 5.35 and 5.50 p.m., Parker Barrow repeatedly appears on screen in the lobby area, but does not appear again after 5.50 p.m. At 6.05 p.m., the security camera, located at letter M, is moved. The footage does not show who moved it, and it stayed in that position until after the robbery occurred. Thank you, co-counsel. You can take that exhibit down now. Great. Agent James, are you aware of how the co-conspirators in this case communicated? Yes, I am. After reviewing Charlie Floyd's plea agreement, I discovered that the robbers had used identical flip phones purchased from Midsell to communicate. The FBI subpoenaed their phone records. Can you describe these phone records? Certainly. According to investigative results, three of the numbers on the phone logs belong to Charlie Floyd, Laurie Boosmail, and Jane Doe, respectively. And a fourth co-conspirator, the inside source, had the fourth and final number on the logs. And who have you possibly considered to be such an inside source? Well, Parker Barrow and Casty Sutton are the only two people who could possibly fulfill that role, though Parker Barrow has more incriminating evidence against them. Thank you, Your Honor. No further direct questions at this time. Cross-examination. Uh, yes, Your Honor. According to you, you conducted a thorough investig investigation and explored all possible leads and su suspects in this case, correct? Yes, I did. And you found no evidence tending to incriminate Parker Barrow and ex Parker Barrow or exonerate bank manager Cassidy Sutton, except the evidence referred in your report, correct? Objection, yes. Your Honor. Compound question. 
please do rephrase that question unless you have a response to the objection. Um, I do not know what a compound question is, so if you guys could. Please split your question up into um, smaller pieces of information and ask them one at a time, if you could. Thank you. Oh, yes, Your Honor. And you found no evidence tending to incriminate Parker Barrow, correct? Except for the evidence uh, mentioned in my report, no. And you have no evidence to exonerate bank teller, bank manager Cassidy Sutton, correct? That is correct, except for the information found in my report. Did you interview the defendant? Yes. I attempted to, but Parker Barrow engaged their lawyer and I was not able to finish it, the interrogation. Did the defendant ever state to you that they personally knew anyone confirmed in the robbery? No, they did not. And there wasn't any other evidence collected on Parker Barrow, correct? Uh, do you mean outside the evidence referenced in my report? Like, you never found the, a cell phone on Parker Barrow, correct? No, I did not. And the only evidence you have against Parker Barrow are the fingerprints, correct? The fingerprints and the fact that P Parker Barrow was there when the security camera was turned off and the fact that Parker Barrow did not trigger the silent alarm. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, there was only actual, excuse me, sorry, let me rephrase that. And you do not know who turned off the cameras, correct? Uh, well, the camera was not turned off. It was, the, its position was changed to that face the ceiling. And you only found evidence on Charlie Floyd and Lori Bowsmelt and not on Parker Barrow, correct? Uh, no, Parker Barrow was not searched. And at the end of the day, there was no actual connection between Parker Barrow or the assailants in the robbery, correct? Uh, well, there was the evidence given by Charlie Floyd that Parker Barrow had a flip phone that was similar to the ones that the robbers had. So I would call that a connection. And Parker Barrow never had that black cell phone on him, correct? Ah, uh, well, when I spoke to Parker Barrow's mother, she said and showed her a picture of that flip phone. She recognized the flip phone because she said that Parker Barrow had had a phone that looked like that in the past. But once you guys searched Parker Barrow, you guys never found a flip phone, correct? Well, we searched Parker Barrow's house and no, we did not find the flip phone. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? Yes, briefly, Your Honor. One second. Excuse me. Your Honor, may I proceed? You may. Agent James, are you aware of the silent alarm system in the bank? Yes, I investigated it thoroughly. And how does it work? Well, the silent alarm is a foot pedal underneath the teller's desks that when they push it down will send a silent alert to the authorities. The foot pedals are equipped with indication lights that turn red when the alarm has been triggered. However, when I investigated the silent alarm system, all of the foot pedals lights were neutral, which indicated that Parker Barrow had not activated the silent alarm. I also found that the foot pedals had anti-tampering technology installed, and when I tested them, were found to be in working condition. Thank you, Your Honor. No further redirect at this time. Recross from the defense. No, Your Honor. Very well. Government can call its second witness.
Thank you, Your Honor. The, the prosecution calls Charlie Floyd. May I begin? You may. Thank you. Ms. Floyd, please introduce yourself to the court. My name is Charlie Floyd. And where do you live? I'm in prison. Why? I'm serving a sentence for an armed robbery that I committed at the Third National Bank of Midlands. And did you work before prison? Yeah, I was a server. Where? This grimy diner in Fairview Midlands called the French Toast Chalet. And I put so many shifts in there, but I could just never make enough dough. Let me direct your attention to early October 2019. What happened around then? Uh, yeah, I was outside the restaurant on break, and then this lady walked up to me. She said her name was Rose, but that clearly wasn't her actual name. Did you recognize her? Yeah, actually. I remembered her from this underground gambling ring back on the east side. I went there sometimes until the buy-in got too steep and I had to dip. Your Honor, permission to display for opposing counsel and the witness what has been marked as Exhibit 10? You may. Ms. Floyd, can you tell me what this is? Uh, this is a sketch of Rose. It's a fair and accurate representation. Thank you. Your Honor, I move to admit Exhibit 10 into evidence. Any objections from the defense on Exhibit 10? No, Your Honor. It is admitted. May I continue? You may. And after Rose approached you, did you speak with her? Yeah, she asked if I wanted to do a little better, that she had some work that could use my expertise. I thought about it for a second and realized if I didn't say yes, I could be in a really bad spot, so I agreed. And after that? She gave me a burner phone and then she left. Your Honor, permission to display for opposing counsel and the witness what has been marked as Exhibit 6? Yes, you may. Now, Ms. Floyd, what is this? This is a photo of the burner phone that Rose gave me. It's a fair and accurate representation. Your Honor, I move to admit Exhibit 6 into evidence. Any objections? No, Your Honor. It is admitted. Let me direct your attention to October 23rd. What happened that day? I received a call on the burner phone that Rose gave me, and she told me to meet her in the parking lot by the Midlands Marina at 11 p.m. Did you comply? Yeah, I pulled into the parking lot and Rose was already there with some woman I didn't recognize. What happened during this meeting? Uh, Rose introduced me to her friend, Miss Magenta, and said that the three of us were gonna have a very profitable arrangement. And then she went into detail about her plan. What was her plan? Uh, Rose said that we were gonna hit the third national bank on Halloween morning because she had it on good authority that a, a large cash deposit is made every Tuesday around 11 a.m. My only job was to go in, wave some guns around, make a little commotion. That was mostly going to be for show. And then I'd walk out with a bag of money. Let me direct your attention to Tuesday, October 24th. What happened that day? Uh, Rose told me that she wanted me to scout out the bank on the 24th. So I put on, I put on a cap on some Ray Suns, you know, the cool glasses. Um, and then I walked to the Third National Bank. Were you instructed to look for anything in particular? Rose wanted me to pay attention to three things. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, that somebody's making a big deposit at that time. Dos, how many bank employees I could see. And tres, see if any of the bank employees seemed nervous. Let me direct your attention to the night of Saturday, October 28th. What did you do that day? I drove back to the Midlands Marina at 10 p.m. I described everything I saw on Tuesday to Rose, that there was this man who made the cash deposit, Parker Barrow and Cassidy Sutton were working in the bank, and that Barrow seemed a little nervous compared to the many times I'd seen him before. And something that caught my eye was that Barrow had a flip phone on the counter, which looked just like the flip phone that Rose gave me and Magenta. Did Rose say anything after? Yeah, after I gave my whole spiel, she was like, sounds like my inside source was right about that deposit. And did you have any concerns before the robbery? Yeah, 
I mentioned them to Rose, but she said not to worry because of her inside source. She even said her inside source was Barrow. Let me direct your attention to Tuesday, October 31st. What happened that day? That was the day that we robbed the bank. I slipped on my mask, headed out my front door, and walked to the Third National Bank. I sauntered around in the parking lot for a bit, pretended to talk on my phone, and then I saw Foley walking into the bank. At the same time, Rose pulled up into the parking lot and Magenta got out of the car, and then we walked in. What happened once you walked inside? I saw that Foley had already handed over the money. Magenta was approaching Barrow and there was no one else in the bank, not even the manager. The security camera was pointed at the ceiling. And what did you do? I shouted, everybody be cool, this is a robbery. I pointed to the gun I was carrying and I quietly whispered to Foley, don't worry, you won't be hurt. Give me your phone and sit down quietly in that chair. And what did Foley do? Foley was trembling and he complied. I made sure not to point my gun at him. I told Foley, count to 100, you know, one of those threats, whatever comes after that, and, and then you can leave. And after that? Uh, I looked over at Magenta and Barrow and they looked very calm. Barrow then handed Magenta a large bag that I could see was full of money. And did the police ever come to the scene? Yeah, out of nowhere, I turned around and there was this police officer with his gun drawn. He was like, police, drop your weapons. I was caught. Um, I'm not stupid, so I put the gun down on the ground. Magenta dropped her gun too, and the bag of money. And were you arrested? Yeah, obviously. Uh, but when I walked out to the parking lot in my handcuffs, Rose's car was gone. The police arrested Magenta and me on October 31st, um, so I guess they didn't know about the inside source, which ended up being good for me. And were you questioned by the police? Yeah, the police uh, asked me if I knew where Rose went. I have no idea. I guess she's still on the run. Her absence has been disappointing to the police and to the prosecutor since she was kind of the big fish around here, but I think everyone was pretty happy I could tell them about Barrow being the inside source. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Cross-examination from the defense. Yes, Your Honor. You are currently incarcerated at the Stockbridge State Correctional Institute in Midlands, correct? Yeah, that's correct. That is because you pleaded guilty to the robbery that took place at Third National on the Third National Bank on October thirty first. Sorry, can you repeat that? That is because you pleaded guilty to the robbery that took place at Third National Bank on October thirty first. Yeah. Your Honor, may I have permission to show Exhibit Eleven? You may show it constructively only to the witness and the opposing counsel. It says I have disabled part. It can share. You are not able to share? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay. Apologies for that. Timekeepers, please pause the time for cross-examination. Uh, Council Valdez, who needs permission to share? You and anyone else? Uh, or just you? Me. Just on me. Um, Your Honor, I have a quick question. Yes. I'd just like to clarify the rule that all attorneys have to be standing when questioning a witness, correct? Um, yes, I believe that is the rule. Okay, thank you. I'm waiting on the admin.
Council of Valdez, um, they are not responding yet. Would you like to go back to the main room and ask them for co-host privilege in this meeting room? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Hello, we need to have a student given co-host privileges so they can share screen. Okay, um, I think we just got that taken care of. Perfect, thank you. Okay. I apologize for the time delay we've caused, Your Honor. Um, I, we haven't had this issue in any of our other rounds. Not a problem. Just to confirm, both timekeepers did pause time. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. It still does not look like counsel for the defense has returned. Well, we're waiting on that. How's everyone doing today? I'll just, I'll just go back to mute. Uh, Your Honor, yes. I may have been able to change the settings that all the participants can screen share, so may request that one of the defense team members try to screen share and see if that's helped. I think the admins also corrected that. Um, we are now just waiting for a participant, so if everyone can just wait. Yes, Your Honor, all members of the prosecution can now screen share fully. Great. Councils for the defense, can you please use any means you can to contact um, your teammate and make sure that they get back in our meeting room?
Judge Andrew. Yes. The timekeeper, she came and she got those permissions taken care of, but she's having a hard time getting back into the room. So we're having her re-log in. Okay. Thank you so, so much. Just a minute longer and she'll be back. Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome back. Please confirm that you are ready to proceed and that you can share screen. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so not letting me share the screen. Can so I just like go to my next question or no? Can one of your co counsels share the screen for you? Would that would that work? Um let me ask. And for the screen sharing, is it for exhibit? Um, 11, yeah. Okay. okay, let me see if I can do it, Your Honor. Thank you, counsel. I am not allowed to share my screen, Your Honor. It says that I cannot. Maybe the reason she can't screen share is because she left and came back. All right. <clears throat> Inviting the admin again. So none of the other defense co-counsels can share screen, but all of the prosecution counsels can share screen. Is that the problem here? It does seem like that, yes. Uh, Nathan Cho can't share a screen? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I will screen share for them. Sorry, different, different Nathan. There's two Nathans in here. Oh. Let me try, Your Honor. Let me try that. We need a defense counsel to share, I believe, Exhibit 11. I, I can share my screen just fine, but I think that's because I'm co-host. That's right. Is there someone else that I should make co-host? Please make um, Eurisa Valdez. Eurisa Valdez. Okay. You still need to come back out into the main room. Okay. Don't get lost. Eurisa, try, try to leave the room and go back to the main room once again. Sorry about that. Okay. And the admin should be able to do it. Your Honor, as our timekeeper is co-host, uh, may we request that they try to enable screen sharing for all members of the defense team? Please. I believe I've changed the settings so that 
everyone can share. Okay. Ms. Lopez, are you able to share your screen and show Exhibit 11 for your co-counsel? Let me check it out. It still says it's disabled for me to just share my screen, Your Honor. Okay. <clears throat> Once the council comes back, we will fix this another way. Um, Your Honor, thank you for your patience. Thank you all for your patience. I am very sorry. Your Honor, is it possible for members of the prosecution team to enable screen sharing on the behalf of members of the defense team? If the defense counsel agrees that that would be all right, I'm sure everyone would be happy with that arrangement for now. And opposing counsel, is that acceptable? Okay, I'm back, Your Honor. Okay, try once more to screen share. Can I just like, do, ask the questions and not show the, the exhibit? Are you comfortable with the prosecution showing Exhibit 11 while you ask questions about it? They have offered to do so. I know that is unorthodox. Uh, yes, Your Honor, the defense agrees that we allow it. Okay. Council Valdez, are you, are you prepared to continue? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, please continue. Timekeepers, please resume. Thank you. Can you please identify this? Uh, yes, this is the plea agreement. Do you have first-hand knowledge of this document? Uh, yes. Okay, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to ask that Exhibit 9 be admitted as evidence. Any objections? Uh, yes, objection of relevance. Response. Um, I'll just move on to my next question, Your Honor. Right. So Exhibit 11 will not be submitted into evidence? Exhibit 11 is not submitted in evidence. Please do not share screen, thank you. Please continue. You're accomplice in that robbery with Lori Bellsman, correct? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You're accomplice in that robbery with Lori Bellsman, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you told police that you got involved in the robbery because you met a woman named Rose, is that correct? Oh uh, yeah, that's kind of what initiated it. Is Rose is present in this courtroom today? No, she's not. She's on the run. Was Rose ever arrested? No, they never found her. Do you know what Rose's real, Rose real name is? Um, no. Do you have any proof or evidence to show that court today to prove that Rose exists? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, she was the one that drove me there and we kept calling each other. I don't know. You claim Rose introduced you to Miss Magenta on October 23rd, correct? Yeah, she did. And Miss Magenta is Lori Bell correct? Yeah, that's her real name. When Rose told you you were going to rob a bank, she mentioned that, that the robber was a three-person job, correct? Um, she, yeah, she mentioned that three people were going to need to go in. Did anyone ever ask you to scout out the Third National Bank? Yeah, Rose asked me to on the 24th. Did you do it? Yeah. When you arrived to the bank on October 24th, 24th you saw two bank employees, Teller, Parker Barham, and manager Cassidy Sutton, correct? Yeah, I saw them working there. And you claimed to know their name because they had na name tagged them, correct? Yeah. You've never met or spoke to borrow and outside bank business, correct? Yeah, no reason to. On October 31st, you drove yourself to the bank, correct? Yeah. The robbery ended when police- Sorry, compound question? Oh, what's a compound question? Like please, please rephrase your question to ask for one, one fact at a time. Oh, okay, Your Honor. Sustained. Thank you. 
when you walk out to the parking lot in handcuffs, you claim Rose's car was gone, correct? Sorry, can you repeat that? When you walk out to the parking lot in handcuffs, you claim Rose's car was gone, correct? Yeah, she left. The police arrested Magenta and you on October 31st, correct? Yep. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor, not at this time. The witness is excused. Prosecution, you may call your third witness. Yes, Your Honor. Prosecution would like to call um, Cassidy Sutton to the stand. Please introduce yourself to the court. My name is Cassidy Sutton. And where do you currently work? I work at the Third National Bank of Midlands. And how long have you worked at the bank? I've worked there since 2008, so about 12 years. And what are some of your um, past occupations in the bank? I worked as a teller for four years, and in 2010, I was promoted to private banker. What is a private banker? It's basically a banker for wealthier clients. And what is your job at the bank now? I am the bank manager. And how long have you worked as the bank manager? I have been in that position for nearly three years now. And uh, as the bank manager, what do you do? I am the one in charge of security, personnel, customer satisfaction, and record keeping. Now, Ms. Sutton, let me direct your attention to the night of October 30th, 2019. What were you doing that day? I was checking the cash on hand, the safe deposit boxes, the vault, and the teller's boxes to make sure they were balanced and emptied. What did you do next? After that, I checked the, the security system. I have a routine to check the security system every night before I leave. Our security system's pretty user-friendly. What do you mean by user-friendly? We have a main control panel in the security office. You can check the status of the entire system at once. And from the control panel, what are some specific things you can check from it? I can check the camera and make sure it's recording. I can also check the vault and the cash boxes. Additionally, I can check if both the silent alarm and the perimeter system are online. What does the uh, silent alarm and the perimeter system do? They are both set to dial 911 if tripped. And what did you conclude about the security of the bank that night? Everything was the way it should be. The camera was pointing in the correct direction and it was recording. The silent alarm was online, so there was no reason the alarm couldn't have been tripped the next day. And what was your feeling about the bank that night? I was extra anxious about the bank because I was planning to be gone. Why were you feeling extra anxious about being gone? It was actually Barrow who suggested I take some time off in the first place. And why did Mr. Barrow say that? He believed I needed a mental health day. Barrow was always commenting about how stressful my job seemed, and I had mentioned I'd started grinding my teeth that night. Barrow gave me a recommendation for the dentist. What was your reaction to this? I was planning on just going during my lunch hour, but Barrow insisted that it would be better to take the whole day. Now, let me direct your attention to October 31st, 2019. What did you do that day? I slept in until about like 8.30. The bank opens at 9, so I called Barrow at the bank at 8.55 just to make sure everything was going well and I didn't need to come in. Barrow said everything was fine and that I should relax and take the day. What did you do next? I made breakfast and turned on the TV. Later, when I was about to turn off the TV, a breaking news report flashed on the screen. It showed the bank and it said that there was an unfolding situation. What was your reaction to this news? I rushed to the bank as quickly as I could, and I helped the local police and the FBI by showing them the security footage from October 30th and 31st. And what did the security footage consist of? The footage for October 30th, 2019, shows me leaving the bank before 6 p.m. At 6.05, the camera was tilted up, so it only captured the ceiling. Barrow was the only employee in the bank when the camera was moved. Your Honor, I would like to request permission to display to the court what has been previously submitted as exhibit number one. You may.
Now, referring to this map of the bank, what's the footage show about Barrow? From 5.30 to 5.50, Barrow appeared a few times on screen doing normal end-of-the-day activities. At 5.50, Barrow left the teller area E, crossed the lobby toward the employee hallway F. The camera lost sight of Barrow as he walked under the camera, which was the last time Barrow appeared on the footage. Thank you, co-counsel. That is all I need from exhibit number one. And this security camera you talked about earlier, what did it show about the robbery? The camera didn't record anything from the robbery because it was pointing upwards until we fixed it later. And also the silent alarm and the perimeter system you mentioned, did it do anything during the robbery? I get a report every time the silent alarm was tripped, but I got no report at all from October 31st. I even double checked with our security company. The silent alarm was not tripped. Now, Ms. Sun, do you have anything else you wish um, to talk about, Mr. Barrett, and you want to tell the court? I think it's a bit too convenient that Barrow was alone on the floor that day. How was it too convenient? Barrow had been acting suspicious for about a week prior to the robbery. And what was, and how was Miss Barrow acting suspicious? Whenever we would talk, Barrow would look around the bank, especially in the direction of the security camera. Also, I'm pretty sure I saw Barrow with the lady in the drawing last summer. I think it's called Exhibit 10. Your Honor, I would like to request permission to display to court what has been previously submitted as Exhibit 10 for visual aid. That's allowed. I miss Sutton. Is this the drawing you're talking about? Yes, that's the one. Thank you, co-counsel. That is all I need from Exhibit number 10. Now, Ms. Sutton, could you tell us more about Mix Barrow and the person in Exhibit 10? It was summer of 2019, and they were outside Hans Hoagie's house, sitting at one of those little metal tables. They were both facing the bank. I remember thinking it was weird. Why was it weird? Normally, Barrow sat alone reading a book or a magazine, but he was never with a friend. I went to the Hoagie house later in Barrow's lunch hour, and I was surprised to still see Barrow sitting there. What was Mix Barrow doing? He was staring at the bank while the lady talked. When Barrow came back from lunch hour, I asked, who's your friend? Barrow looked at me a little funny before telling me it was nobody. And have you been asked anything relating to a phone? Yes. The police showed me a phone, which I think was exhibit six, and they'd asked if I'd seen it before. I'm pretty sure I saw Barrow staring at a phone just like that on the day I saw Barrow with the lady. Your Honor, one last time, I would like to request permission um, to display what has been previously submitted as exhibit number six as a visual aid. You may. Now, Ms. Sutton, is this a phone that you're talking about? Yes, that's the phone. Thank you, co-counsel, and I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Any cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. May I proceed? You may. Hello, Mr. Sutton. You are recently reported. Is that correct? I'm sorry, you cut. Counsel, it was a little hard to um, tell what you were saying. You were cutting out a little bit. Could you try turning off your video? Please proceed. Hello, Cassidy Sutton. You are recently divorced. Is that correct? Yes. You mentioned in your application financial problems due to child and spousal support. Is that correct? May you repeat your question? I couldn't hear you. You mentioned in your affidavit having financial problems due to child and spousal support. Is that correct? Yes. After the divorce, the court ruled in favor of my, of my husband keeping the kids, and so I must pay a lot of child support and and spousal support, so I'm a it's a little financially strained at the moment. Do you ever recall making a statement to Jesse Hurst about being so poor you might have to rob your own bank? I don't believe I've ever spoken to Jesse Hurst. Your Honor, in the affidavit of Jesse Hurst, it shows clearly that Miss Sutton had made a, a joke on, sorry, Your Honor. 
on the affidavit of Jesse Hurst, Jesse Hurst says that he has heard um, Miss Sutton make a statement about have, being so poor she might have to rob her own bank. Are you objecting, Counselor? Uh, may I respond? You may respond to that objection. Now, the council cannot use another person's affidavit to testify to or to correct another witness. It is Any only response? their own. Sorry, Your Honor. No, go ahead. Uh, apologies. Yeah, it is only oh, it's only Miss Sutton's affidavit that Miss Sutton can testify to, not another person's affidavit. Therefore, that is not a valid objection. Any response? Your Honor, may I show Sutton's affidavit? You may screen share this witness's Cassidy Sutton's affidavit. Thank you. Your objection is overruled at this time. Okay. Sorry about that, Your Honor. Um, you are very familiar with the large deposit Jackie Foley makes every Tuesday. Is that correct? Yes, I'm familiar. It was your job as a bank manager to check the security system and make sure that the system was working properly. Is that correct? Objection, Your Honor. Compound question. It was one idea. I will overrule that. Yes, it is my responsibility to check the security system, which I real I did. If there had been any issue with the security system, I would have called the security company to help me fix it. According to you, you conduct a routine check of the security system every night you leave the bank. Is that correct? Yes, I even conducted one on the night before the robbery. And you checked the cameras on October 31st after the robbery, correct? Yes, it showed nothing of the robbery because it was facing up toward the ceiling. The video does not show the person who moved the camera, does it? No, it did not. You mentioned the night before the robbery, you were extra anxious, is that correct? Yes, I was. On October 31st, 2019, the FBI told you you were a suspect in the robbery, is that correct? Yes, they did, but later they told me I was no longer a suspect once they had Barrow. And this was because the FBI believed the robbers had an accomplice, is that correct? Yes, that is why I was told I was a possible subject. And the FBI said the evidence pointed to you or Beryl, is that correct? Yes. And once Beryl was arrested, you were told you were no longer a suspect, is that correct? Yes, it is. Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? No redirect, Your Honor. The prosecution rests. Thank you. Defense, you may call your first witness. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor. Oh, sorry, Your Honor. Your Honor, the defense would like to, to call to the stand Jesse Hurst. You may proceed when ready. Okay. Your Honor, um, Ms. Hurst hasn't shown to the stand. Let me make sure she is on here real quick. 
Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Did not see you. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Can you please introduce yourself to the court? Yes, my name is Jesse Harris. I am Parker Barrow's mother, and I am here testifying today in respect of my son, Parker Barrow, because I know he wouldn't have a video. What characteristics do you know to be true about the defendant, Parker Barrow? Isn't greedy, has never been motivated by money, and has always had a sense of right and wrong. Right and wrong. Why does Parker Barrow live with you? Because of health issues in the past, he now lives with me. What happened in August 2019? You see, on August, in August of 2019, I did have a health scare due to the chemo damaging my thyroid because of my stomach cancer. I passed out and hit my head on the corner of the table while making my coffee. And when I woke up, but, uh, my son was calling 911 and I had a lot of blood coming out of my head. Does Parker have a job? Yes, he works at uh, Midland Third National Bank and has a side job helping a photographer. Does Parker have a steady income? Yes, he works two jobs and has a steady flow of income. Are you having any financial problems? No, I am not. Does Parker have any financial problems? No, he was working two jobs and was starting to live the life of a successful young man. Are you familiar with the third national bank Parker works at? Yes, because I would go visit my son while he was at work and just deposit my winnings of my scratch off lottery ticket. Are you aware of the events that took place on October 31st? Yes, I am. I was so shocked to hear what had happened that day. Did you see Parker on October 31st? Yes, before work and after work when he told me about the robbery. Your Honor, uh, just a point of clarification. Are you objecting? Uh, no, just a point of clarification. Witnesses are supposed to back away from their computers during questioning. Am I right? Uh, that is a uh, court's interpretation and I, I believe everything is okay right now. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, what did you notice about Parker? He was very shaken and in a state of shock after what happened. What happened on November 1st? The FBI showed up and took Parker in for questioning. What happened on November 8th? The FBI questioned me. What did you tell the FBI? I told the FBI I have never seen the mask or gun shown in Exhibits 4 and 5, and I cooperated fully because I know my son would have probably. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of proper foundation. Any response? Your Honor, can you repeat the objection? The objection was to lack of foundation. Your Honor, I'll just move on. Do you have anything else of significance to add? No, I do not, and all statements I made are based on my personal knowledge. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. One second to prepare, please. Your Honor, may I proceed? You may. Ms. Hurst, you are the mother of the defendant, Parker Barrow. 
Yes, that is correct. And you and Barrow are very close. Yes, that is correct. We are like best friends. And you support each other however you can. Yes, that is correct. After his father's passing, we became really close. Mm -hmm. You said you enjoy buying lottery tickets. Yes, that is correct. I get to deposit my winnings and visit my work at so and visit my son at work before he moved in with me again. Yeah. And you also said that in April 2019, you had a health scare. That is correct. Your thyroid was damaged? Yes, due to my stomach cancer. And after this, your son came home to live with you? That is correct. And now he lives in your basement? That is correct. I wanted to give him like his own mini apartment. Your son has also been on the phone a lot recently. Yes, that is correct. I thought maybe it was like his girlfriend or something. Yes, and he talks quietly. Yes, that's, that is correct. Almost as if he's embarrassed. Yes, as I mentioned, maybe because he had a girlfriend or something. And you're certain that you saw your son with a flip phone? That is correct. I thought maybe it was because he wanted to uh, get away from his iPhone and so much technology. You honor permission to display what has been previously moved into evidence as Exhibit 6. You may. Co-counsel. Yeah. Are you familiar with this? Yes, I am. And this is the flip phone that your son had. Yes, that it looks like it. It's the same color? Yes, it is. The same model? Yes. And the same design? That is correct. Your Honor, excuse me, co-counsel, you can remove that. And you thought this was odd, didn't you? Yes, I did. Because Parker Barrow always had an iPhone with them. Yes, as I mentioned before, uh, maybe it was because he wanted to get away from so much screen technology. And you said that in today's case, you're basing your arguments on your own personal bias towards your son. That is correct. Thank you, Your Honor. No further cross-questioning at this time. Is there a redirect? No, Your Honor. Defense, you may call your next witness. May I, can I call Pride Danger to the stand, Your Honor? You may, and proceed when ready. I'm sorry, what name did you say? Patty Dillinger. Okay. Can you please introduce yourself to the court? My name is Patty Dillinger and I work at Hans Hoagie House. What connection do you have to this case? I work in a shop that in the store that's right in front of the bank and I was the one to call the police. Do you know any workers from the Third National Bank? Yes, I know Parker and Sutton. What happened on October 31st? I saw suspicious things happening in the parking lot and I called the police. The bank was being robbed. Excuse me, Your Honor. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I know it states in the rules that a witness cannot um, be reading during questioning and I'm not insinuating anything I just think it might be helpful to everyone if all witnesses could back up from their cameras. Patty Derringer would you mind just backing up thank you. Yeah sorry. All right you may proceed. Did you see someone in the parking lot where did you see someone in the parking lot of the bank wearing a mask? Yes I saw Charlie Floyd holding a mask and then he put it on. Did you see Jackie Fuller into the bank? Yes. Have you seen this woman before? Yes. She had come in Tuesday, to a Tuesday saying that she was cashing in a bigger deposit. What happened after police arrived? Uh, the person in the parking lot drove away and uh, Charlie Floyd and uh, Lori Bosmail were brought out in handcuffs. Did you see Parker Bar on October 31st? Yes, he came in and into my store an hour after the robbery. 
Why did you observe about Barrow? He seemed very calm. Do you have anything else significant to add? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross-examination. Uh, may I have a second to prepare? You may have a brief moment, yes. Sorry, I just need to move my computer. <laughs> Ms. Dillinger, you own Hans Hoagie House in Midland City, correct? Yes. And um, the Hoagie House shares a parking lot with Third National Bank of Midlands, correct? Yes, also a garbage can, a, the, the, the trash. A dumpster? Yeah, the dumpster, sorry, I forgot the word. Um, you and the bank are the only two businesses there though, correct? Yes. And you have regulars at the shop? Yes, Parker and Sutton. Parker Barrow goes to your shop a couple times a week? Yes, during lunchtime. And Cassidy Sutton comes to pick up sandwiches for his dinner during the week, correct? Yes. Would it be reasonable to say that you are familiar with Parker Barrow? Yes. And would it be reasonable to say that you are familiar with Sutton? Yes. On the day of October 30th, 2019, Sutton came in for a sandwich around 5.30 p.m., correct? Yes. And Cassidy Sutton was at your store until 6.15 on October 30th, correct? Yes. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. This witness is excused, and defense, you may call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor, the defense would like to call up Harper Carpus to the stand. You may proceed when ready. Please make sure all mobile devices are turned off or silenced. Can you please introduce yourself to the court? Hello, my name is Harper Carpus. I am currently a tenured professor of criminology at Western Midland State University. As well, I assist the FBI in high profile robberies and financial crimes. And your honor, I would like to ask that the defendant, your honor, the defense asked to tender Harper Carpus as an expert witness, as he is an expert in bank security consultant and also an, is an FBI consultant, as well as a PhD in criminology. Any response? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I believe Harper Carpus do not currently have enough foundation. For example, Harper Carpus, there's nothing about their uh, background or other stuff they did relating to their jobs in FBI or their education they currently obtain. So I don't think that it's okay for um to be an expert witness. In addition, th there's a rule in this competition that you cannot qualify expert witness. Can you direct me to that rule number? I am not sure of the rule number, but I do remember it was an issue last time. Therefore, they fixed it. Any response? Uh, Your Honor, we have never had this problem of bringing in an expert witness as of this case. According to Rule 4.21, um, expert witnesses are not tendered to the record. So you may uh, proceed with your questions um, and lay foundation okay. for the opinion. Thank you, Your Honor. What connection do you have to the defendant? Uh, not much at all. I have only spoken to their attorney. What credentials do you have to testify in today's case? 
I currently have a PhD in criminology, and as I had said, I assist the FBI in investigating high-profile robberies and financial crimes, and I was also once a bank robber myself. Did you get paid to testify in today's case? Yes, I did get paid. I got paid 30000 to analyze the likelihood of Parker Barrow's involvement, but my compensation does not depend on the outcome of this case. While reconstructing the robbery, what were you trying to find out? I was trying to find out how many people were involved and determine whether or not there was an inside person. What are the three criteria to determine if there was an inside person in this case? Objection, Your Honor. Assumed facts not in evidence. Response? Uh, Your Honor, this witness does is able to testify to this question as he does have a background knowledge of working in the FBI and is a criminology major. May, may I respond? You may respond. Your Honor, I am not referring to Harper Carpus not being an expert. However, the opposing counsel assumed that there was three credentials in checking if there was a person involved, which has not been established yet. Any response? I'll move on, Your Honor. In your expert opinion, did this crime seem sophisticated enough to involve an inside person? No, I do not believe there was an inside person because the group appeared to be amateurs due to their rookie mistakes, which counts against the use of an inside person. How many participants do you know to have been involved in this robbery? There were at least three participants in this robbery, Charlie Floyd, Lori Bosmel, and they, they had went to the bank and did the robbery, and Jane Doe was the getaway driver. What did you notice of, about the overall planning and execution of this case? As I had said, they seem to be- Objection, Your Honor. Assume fact not in evidence. Any response, Counselor? I'll move on, Your Honor. Okay, sustained. What was your overall conclusion from the reconstruction? My overall conclusion would be, uh, lead me to believe that Parker Barrow is not guilty and that eyewitnesses trying to link Barrow to Jane Doe are not credible. The Objection, Your Honor. Lay opinion. Any response? Your Honor, this witness is allowed to say their opinion as he is working on the case and he was a professional during the case examining everything that happened. May I respond, Your Honor? You may respond. Now, the only thing that Harper Carp has seen prior to this case is the statements of Agent James and Bank Manager Sutton. I don't think that is enough to know about the uh, robbery's execution or, and in addition, it is not allowed because uh, any witnesses are not allowed to directly say if a, the defendant is guilty or not. Any final response? No, Your Honor. The objection is sustained as to the ultimate issue and overruled as to lay witness. Based on your review of the police investigation in this case, what have you concluded? I concluded that there are several potential issues that raise meaningful questions that the jury should consider. In particular, there are real questions as to whether the robbery was an inside job two different suspects that could have been if there was an inside person, and whether eyewitness accounts attempting to link Jane Doe to Parker Barrow and the crimes that are credible. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. May I proceed? May I proceed? You may. You may. Thank you. Mr. Carthus, in the consulting bank robbery case, you can offer a unique perspective. That is correct. And that's because you're a reformed robber? Yes. And you were a part of a ring that robbed 17 banks across Midlands, correct? Yes, that is correct. And in January of 2020, Barrow's lawyer paid you $30,000. Yes, to testify in this case, but no matter the outcome of the case, I will still be being paid. Now, about the camera of the bank, it is possible that Barrow manipulated the camera to point it toward the ceiling? Objection, Your Honor, speculation. Response? 
Your Honor, this is not speculation because Harper Carpus has seen the um, statements of Agent James and um, Cassie Sutton, in which, which in fact, Agent James, as heard earlier, knows about the camera and therefore the witness should have enough information to determine if Barrow is, if, if it's possible for Barrow to have manipulated the camera or not. Any response? Uh, yes, Your Honor. He is asking my witness to speculate whether it was Parker Barrow that moved the camera. Last response, may I, Counselor. May I respond? I am not asking for a solid answer. I'm asking if it's a possibility. Your objection is overruled. Uh, Mr. Carpenter, you want me to repeat the question? Yes, can you please? Now about the camera of the bank. It is possible that Barrow manipulated the camera to point it toward the ceiling? Yes, the possibility of Barrow and Sutton. And it's also the same with um, Bear, Mix Barrow. I might have chosen oh, not to use a sound. Can you repeat that? Okay. It, it is also it possible is that Mix Barrow might have chosen not to use a silent alarm. Yes, that's absolutely. And some factors show that the robbers might have modified the security system. Can you repeat that? Some factors show that the robbers might have modified the security system. Objection, Your Honor, facts not in evidence. Response? Your Honor, Your Honor it is in line 104 to 105 that Ms. Carp, uh, not Ms., my bad, Mr. Carpus says that the robbers might have electric electronically manipulated the security system. Any final response? No, Your Honor. Overruled. Mr. Carpus, however, nothing has actually shown that the robbers have such a skill to modify the security system, correct? I would not know. And the fortunate timing of the robbery can indicate that there was an inside person. Can you repeat that? The fortunate timing of the robbery can possibly indicate that there was an inside person? Yes, that is correct. And it's also the same case with the lack of alarm activation? Yes, that is correct. And if there was an inside person, there are two major possibilities. Yes, Cassidy Sutton and Parker Barrow. And um, Mix Barrow's family have medical issues. I would not know, I have never spoke, oh, well, I do know, as I have said. I heard that Parker Barrow's family has had issues. Now, you also believe it is less plausible for Sutton to be the inside person? I did state that, but there is also a chance that he is. And it is because uh, Miss Sutton was not present in the crime scene, correct? Correct. Right. Not the day of, correct. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. The witness is excused. Defense, are you calling any more witnesses? Defense, are you calling any more witnesses? Uh, no, Your Honor, the, the defense rests. Thank you. We will take a five minute, hard five minutes. So be back here. I will call this back to order at uh, 707 Eastern time, which is 507 Mountain time. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. The government is ready to proceed. Defense, are you ready to proceed?
Defense, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Counselor for the prosecution. Yes, Your Honor. Members of the jury, this is a case about silent deaths. Not every bank robber is waving a gun demanding money. Some robbers are just standing behind the teller desk ready to hand cash over to their co-conspirators. That was Park Cabrero on October 31st. Let's talk about what you've heard. October 31st, 2019, Park Cabrero was a lone employee at the Third National Bank. Mr. Foley entered to make his regular cash deposit and two masked women, Laurie Boosmail and Charlie Floyd followed. Miss Floyd held a gun. Well, Nick Sparrow calmly handed Miss Boosmail a bag of cash. And fortunately, the police arrived. But this robbery involves far more than two individuals entering a bank on a whim. It was planned and executed by four people, two robbers, a getaway driver, and a bank employee. Jane Doe recruited everyone, gave them flip phones for communication and assigned tasks. Charlie Floyd scoped out the bank a week in advance and brought a gun to the robbery. Laurie Boosmet collected the cash from the teller and a teller at Parker Barrow tried to prevent the group from getting caught. Mr. Barrow told Ms. Doe that Mr. Foley deposited a large sum of cash every Tuesday and also adjusted the bank camera the night before the robbery, leaving behind fingerprints Agent James found during the investigation. Mr. Barrow failed to trip the sudden alarm on a day after the robbery preferring to calmly hand over the cash to their co-conspirators, silent thief. Parker Barrow's parent had medical issues and needed money. Miss Sutton saw Mix Barrow sitting with Jane Doe and we leave it to you to infer what they were talking about that led to Miss Doe to tell Charlie Floyd that the inside person for the robbery was the teller Barrow, the silent thief. Furthermore, Jesse Hurst, Mix Barrow's mother, saw Mix Bear with a flip phone, the same phone Ms. Doe provided to each of the co-conspirators. This is strange. As Ms. Harris has said, Mix Bear already had a different phone. In addition, Mix Bear was found on the phone multiple times, talking in a quiet voice like he was embarrassed. What would cause him to do so? We leave it to you to infer why such actions were taken. As heard during Ms. Sutton's direct examination, the bank has a sign alarm and it's set to call 911 when they're activated. The alarm worked perfectly the night before, but Parker Barrow never triggered it. There's also a security camera. The night before, Miss Sutton checked the camera was pointing in the right direction, and Miss Sutton left the bank around 5.31 p.m., leaving Parker Barrow alone. At 6.05 p.m., the camera was moved. Charlie Floyd told you that she had a gun in the bank, and according to a case called United States versus Stramiello, all of the robbery participants are guilty of armed bank robbery. Furthermore, a case called United States versus Shaw tells us Parker Barrow is guilty of any actions that their fellow members, fellow robbers took. And the case United States versus Vanier concluded that it's only an agreement to commit a crime is more than enough to prove a person beyond the reasonable doubt, beyond the reasonable doubt guilty of conspiracy. This is a case about silent theft. Members of the jury, we ask you to find Parker Barrow guilty of the charges of conspiracy of helping the robbers, bank robbery, an armed bank robbery. Thank you, Your Honor, and the members of the jury. Thank you. Counsel for the defense. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, sorry. Your Honor, members of the jury, my name is Yarisa Valdez, and to along with my co-counsel, Justin Lopez, and Telejo, we will probably re represent the defendant, Parker Barrow. Today, we learn about Parker Barrow, a young and professional bank employee with a building career. A talented artist, sculptor, and photographer, an honest, helpful, and adoring child of a single parent suffering from stomach cancer. What we learned today is that we have no reason to believe Parker Bar had anything to do with the robbery that took place at the Third National Bank on Halloween 2019. They are a victim of this crime. When Charlie Floyd and Lori Bell walk into the bank at around 11 a.m., they waved guns in Parker Bar's face, intimidated them, and threatened their life and stole. This order was traumatizing for Parker Bar, who lived in tears the entire night of October 31st. The prosecution wants you to believe that Parker Bar was involved because Charlie Floyd said they were going to get themselves a plea deal. 
Today, the facts, evidence, and testimony show that only three individuals planned executed this crime. Parker Bar was at the scene of, this, of the crime, but only because they were working a shift at the bank like they normally do. The investigators in this crime are drawing conclusions, not based in fact. We learned today that the, that the evidence in this case is interruptible. The eyewitness accounts are weak and valuable. In fact, there is no concrete evidence to show that Parker Barrow knows anyone personally who was involved in this robbery, that, that Parker Barrow had anything motive to commit this crime, or that Parker Barrow had anything to do with the planning or execution of, the, of this crime. But we do, what we do know that is that Parker Barrow had, had no reason to risk their job, life, future, or well-being of their parent to engage in this type of criminal conduct. Parker Barrow inserts their innocence. Today, the defense to present it to you like three key witnesses to help illustrate the clear doubt in this case that will point to their innocence. First, FBI criminology consultant and university professor Harper Carpus testified that there, that there is simply not enough facts or evidence to support that there was an fourth accomplice or that person was Parker Barrow. While some evidence might favor the use evidence, and the, the, the facts show the team to be inexperienced to have used one. Jesse Hurst testified that Parker Bar had a strong moral compass and had no reason to, to be involved in this crime. On the day of the robbery, Parker, with this drug crime, could hardly get sleep because of the trauma associated with being robbed at the gunpoint. Finally, Pat Dinscher showed that there simply are too many similarities with the facts of this case. I suppose I went and Dinscher saw the crime from across the street, through a closed door, and could not see it inside bank. The prosecution went to show Kelly showed us there was no evidence to, show, to connect Barr to anyone involved in the robbery, and they found a concrete, concrete connection to Barr in the, at the bay, black lip cell phone. Bully told us today that Barker Barr did not rob her or point the gun at her or wear a mask. And Sam further proved that no one really knows what happened to the security camera or felt alarm shifting that day. The only thing that prosecution has for searching today are speculation, her saying random evidence did not get into the root of the issue of being addressed today. The, the defense confirmed that after hearing the facts and testimony presented to you today in this case, you will find the defendant not guilty or any charge. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any rebuttal from the prosecution? Yes, Your Honor. First, can I ask the timekeepers how much time do I have left? You Thank have you one minute and 35 seconds. Thank you. Do both timekeepers agree with that amount? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You may proceed. Now, in defense closing argument, she claimed that Carpus said there was not a fifth, not, not a fourth person. This is not true. Carpus Carpus believed there are two possibilities of there being a fourth person. In addition, she also, Carpus also believed that there is a 50% chance of there being a fourth person in the first place. Second, it is not true that there is no reason for Parker Barrow to have extra money. Even the defense also admitted it. Her, um, Mix Barrow's parent has medical issues and that is definitely enough to prove that it's a motive for more money. And lastly, witnesses testified that Mix Barrow was calm during the robbery which is opposite of what defense has said. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. For the next few minutes, the jurors will finish. For the next few minutes, the jurors will work on their ballots and submit them promptly within 30 minutes. While they are doing that, if each team would like to present their chosen best attorney and best witness, whichever team is uh, ready first, they can go ahead and present that while we wait a few minutes to give the jurors a couple minutes to finish that.
your honor, the prosecution would like to award the Star Attorney Award to Jocelyn Lopez and the Star Witness Award to Jalen Lujan for her role as Jesse Hurst. Thank you. Congratulations. Defense, are you ready? Uh, yes, Your Honor. For best attorney, we chose Nathan, Nathan Cho. And for our best witness, Alexandra Guerrera. Sorry. Guerrera. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. You're welcome. Congra congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Can the three jurors just let me know when you're ready, um, whether you finished the ballot or not, but ready to give some quick critique and congratulatory remarks. I'm ready. Ready to move on, Your Honor. All right. Well, everyone, super, super huge congratulations to you all. Um, let's just all give everyone a, a bit of an applause for the job they did, all right? Uh, my name is Andrew Kelly, and it was an honor to preside over this fantastic presentation from both teams. So sorry for the technical difficulties we encountered. Um, everyone did a great job of remaining courteous and really, you know, making it work despite that. Hopefully it gives you good prep as you continue with the season for other online tournaments. Um, I competed in mock trial in high school and in college. Uh, I did it a lot. It actually couldn't have gone to college uh, without the scholarship. And so it was a big part of my life and my friends that I made in high school and college are some of my best friends still today. So I absolutely love the activity and it was an absolute honor to watch all of you and uh, listen. So thank you so much. Uh, Judge Claire, would you like to give your remarks? Thank you, Andrew. Hi all, my name is Claire. I competed in mock trial in high school, actually alongside Zach Pachekai. Uh, we were both honored to be on the world champion team uh, back in 2013. Um, so incredibly delightful to have the opportunity to give back and listen to you all. Um, I, I will say you all did amazing. Uh, so wonderful to be on the other side. I know it's nerve wracking. Um, just some small notes. It is really clear when you read the screen, your eyes go track back and forth. Um, so obviously in live tournament, you wouldn't have a screen to read. Uh, so the next challenge for you would be Remove yourself from the screen. Um, I had extra shout outs for Dane. I thought you did a wonderful job. Your composure was strong throughout. Um, Kelly James, that performance was um, very well done. Way to hold your own in cross. Um, so wonderful job there. Uh, and um, the witness, oh, oh, sorry about that. Um, and Yorissa, you did a you did a stellar job in your performance as well. So thank you all so much and uh, wonderful to be a part of it. I'll pass it over to Janine. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Janine Ball. I also participated in mock trial all throughout my high school. Um, I've been to Empire, qualified for states, been to national. So this is all super familiar to me. And it's so cool to um, see this as my senior season was cut short last year due to COVID. So this is really cool to be able to watch you guys and judge you guys. Um, again, going off of Claire, you guys did a great job. Um, I've seen so much improvement just from yesterday when I was judging. Um, I think overall, like the confidence was way stronger. Um, you really stuck to what uh, you were trying to argue. The objections were way better, um, really clear and concise. Um, I think just a few notes, um, especially on like the closings and openings, take your time. Um, you guys have like five minutes, I think it is, 
to give those opening and closing arguments. Take as much time as you need. Um, don't feel like you have to rush through. Really make sure that you're painting this picture for us judges because we don't know the case as in depth as you guys do. So just take note of that. And then um, also again with directs, make sure that they sound like a conversation between the attorney and the witness. I think that that's super helpful just for us judges and for you guys to really get into character um, and to really understand the case. And it just makes everything um, look better. The performance um, will be way better if you're more natural in your comfort zone. And I know it's nerve wracking. I know exactly what it feels like, but just take your time, make sure everything um, is super clear and concise. But besides that, you guys uh, give yourself a big pat on the back. You guys did awesome. Um, but yeah, passing that over to Zach. Hi everyone, my name is Zach. Wow, what a ride, a bank robbery over Zoom. Who would have thought? Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate what has already been said. I thought that you guys did a phenomenal job. So first of all, congratulations. Um, you know, a few technical difficulties aside, I know that it is difficult to present this case, you know, over a computer. I know that it can be challenging. Um, just a few notes with that. I really did enjoy the times that, you know, you were demonstrative, whether it be with your hands explaining the layout of a bank or, you know, they put the money down or the cops came in or um, I really enjoyed when the attorneys had really good presence and maybe they took a meaningful step and, you know, kept our eyes on the screen and kept us engaged. Um, I really enjoyed the inflection that I was hearing through a lot of the performances. Um, let's see. And I'll leave with, I think, you know, some of the best advice that I got doing mock trial um, that hopefully will help you as you move through the rounds after this one is, I think that as much energy as your team can hold on to as the round progresses, it's definitely a really long process and we want to see the energy with the witnesses, with the attorneys. And, you know, that doesn't mean that you have to be loud or flamboyant. It can mean, you know, for the attorneys really having a meaningful pause in their questioning or changing the inflection or volume of your voices um, for the witnesses really leaning into the character you see in your affidavits. Um, yeah, so I'll leave you with that. And again, congratulations. I thought it was a really fun round to watch. Thank you. Thank you, judges, for your excellent feedback. I believe that concludes our trial. Thank you again, everyone, and have a great uh, round tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.